Hi everyone, welcome to our info session. Um, today we are talking about the dual degree options here at Duke between uh, the business school and the School of the Environment. So these are the Masters of Environmental Management paired with an MBA or the MEM MBA program and the Masters of Forestry paired with an MBA or the MF MBA. Um, we are talking today from the Fuqua School of Business and my name is Katie Cross. I'm joined today by Cynthia Peters, who's the Assistant Dean for Student Services at the Nicholas School of the Environment and by one of our current students, Juan Pablo Quintero, who's gonna talk about his experience in the dual degree program. So first I'm gonna tell you a little bit about our format today, um, a little bit of ground rules, introduce our topic, and then I'll turn it over to my guests to introduce themselves. Today is a live Q&A session. So we have an iPad in front of us here. You can go ahead and start entering your questions. We will see them as they come in, and we'll try to get to as many of them as possible during our session today. Um, if you have a question that is very specific to admissions, like you want to ask about tests or essays, we are not going to address those in this session today. Um, instead, we're going to talk about all the sort of mechanics and the facets and the unique opportunities in the dual degree programs and what makes Duke a great place to study. But if you have questions that are very specific to admissions, I'm going to instead refer you to the admissions office at Fuqua. Their email is admissions-info at fuqua.duke.edu or the admissions office at the Nicholas School of the Environment, which is nicholas-admissions at duke.edu. Or, of course, you can go to the admissions websites for both of those programs and find the Contact Us page uh, to learn more and ask your questions that have to do with the application process. Um, also, we will try to get to as many questions as possible, but if you have a question that's very specific to your own unique circumstances, maybe it has to do with sort of your own personal work history and where you want to go, we might not address those today. We're going to try to cover the topics that might be of interest to a broad general audience, um, but we certainly invite you to follow up with us or with others involved either in the program or in the admissions process at either school so you can get those questions answered too. Um, we'll talk more about that as we go. So first, uh, again, my name's Katie Cross. I am the Managing Director of the EDGE Center here at Fuqua. So that's the Center for Energy Development and the Global Environment based at the Fuqua School of Business here on Duke's campus. And just a few doors down is the Nicholas School of the Environment. Um, just a short walk from from Fuqua, and uh, this is the home for all of our dual degrees. So at EDGE, we kind of act as sort of a unofficial home for our dual degree students who we affectionately call MEMBAs. So that is the MEM MBA, but when we use the term MEMBA, we are often um, referring to both the MEM MBA and the MF MBA students who are interested in both business and environment. Um, if you are not already familiar with the dual degree options, I'll just lay out a little bit of the structure. So typically, a dual degree student will start at the Nicholas School of the Environment uh, for one year, and then they will spend their second year here at the Fuqua School of Business, and then they will spend their third year as a blended year where they're taking classes in both schools and they're finishing up their master's project at the Nicholas School. Um, the dual degree at Duke is one of the best business and environment degree programs in the world. It's incredibly prestigious and it's incredibly unique that you have a chance to study at one of the best schools of the environment in the world and one of the best business schools in the world. So uh, it's a really incredible opportunity for students who are interested. And the real benefit of the dual degree is that you're getting two masters in the space of three years instead of four. So all of those degrees, the MEM at Nick School or the MF at Nick School would normally be a two-year program and the MBA would normally be a two-year program and putting them together in the joint degree, you can complete both full masters and graduate with two master's degrees and three years instead of four. So it's a really interesting, innovative program that allows you to go deep on your environmental subject expertise. So that's, you know, environmental science, policy, environmental economics, specializing in water, wastewater, forestry, uh, energy, business and environment. Um, we'll get into more of the topics, but the School of the Environment gives you that really deep environmental expertise. And then uh, the MBA gives you the subject matter expertise in 
marketing, finance, strategy, accounting, operations, sort of all the full business toolkit. So that's what you get in the three-year dual degree program. Um, and it's a really exciting opportunity. It can be part of two different schools, two different communities. You'll have access to different clubs at each school, um, but you'll also have access to a really tight-knit member community. Um, we have about 10 to 12 students per class year. So in any given year, that means we have between 30 and 40 members on campus across the three-year program. And um, as Juan Pablo will tell you, I'm sure it's a really fun group, a really tight-knit group, um, and our alumni network is incredibly supportive. Um, so you have a lot of fun as you go through the program. You have a lot of support, um, and you also have a lot of expertise to be gained at, at both schools. So that's just a very small snapshot of the program. We're gonna talk more about curriculum and concentrations and extracurriculars, um, but let me stop there and um, let Cindy introduce herself and talk about her role at the Nicholas School of the Environment. Hi everyone, as Katie said, my name is Cindy Peters, Cynthia, but I go by Cindy. Um, and I am an assistant dean in student services. I've been with Nicholas School for almost 22 years and at Duke for more than 40. Um, but I'm thrilled to be able to be with you today to talk a little bit about the Nicholas School. We sometimes call ourselves the NIC School or NSOE. Um, and so we're the home for the professional master's degrees. We have a number of concurrent degrees, uh, including the MEM with the MBA or the MF with the MBA. And as Katie said, it's doable within three years. Typically, students will start um, with Nicholas School, especially if you are applying as a concurrent or dual or joint degree student, uh, we use all those terms interchangeably. Um, if you do apply as a concurrent degree student, then you would typically start with us in the Nicholas School, do a full year, then your second year at Fuqua, and then a blended third year. And you pay tuition directly uh, to Duke University, and then the two schools have a formula that splits it out in the background, so you don't have to worry about it. Um, we have a number of concentrations within the Nicholas School. Uh, starting with fall 23, the, the, if you've looked at the website prior to now, um, you will see one thing, it's been changed. We did a refresh with our curriculum. And so now we're gonna have four environmental concentrations and four management concentrations, and you'll choose one of each, depending on what your interests are. Um, so we're sort of, the courses are the same, the degree requirements aren't really changing, but you'll pick um, either coastal and marine systems, ecotoxicology and environmental health, energy and environment, or terrestrial and um, uh, freshwater environments. So those are the sort of major uh, environmental concentrations. And then the management concentrations are business and environment, community engagement and environmental justice, which is um, a really exciting area that we're doing a lot of growth in environmental analytics and modeling, and then environmental economics and policy. <clears throat> so those are how we're gonna be structured going forward, and that's what you'll see when you submit your application. As Katie. And Cindy, those are, that's for the MEM, but they're also the Masters of Forestry would be different, is that correct? Yes, the Master of Forestry is a little bit different because it's also accredited by the Society of American Foresters, um, and so it has some requirements that it has to meet uh, to maintain that accreditation. But that's a really important credit accreditation, especially if you're international and planning to practice forestry internationally. Having that um, on your, on your uh, resume is a really important thing. Um, so when you apply, you have to apply to both schools, and each school will consider your application separately, um, and each school makes its own decision. Uh, and then we, we have great communication between the two schools. And you'll find, as Katie said, a lot of support uh, from both schools uh, in terms of, of your academics, in terms of your social adjustment, in terms of your extracurriculars, lots of extracurriculars that really add value to your experience here. So I don't know, I mean, that's kind of a general. Yeah, that's um, great. So. That's a great starting point. Let's, uh, we'll get into some of those particulars of the extracurriculars um, as we go. But I know that our prospective students really want to hear from you, Juan Pablo. Like, what's it like to be a student? Tell us your, your story, what you what you did before Duke, yeah. or maybe why you chose the dual degree, and a little bit about your experience since you've been here. Sure. Um, so hello, everyone. My name is Juan Pablo. 
Um, so a bit of background on myself. I did my uh, bachelor's in finance and marketing at the NYU Stern School of Business, and I minored in environmental science when I was at NYU. So business and the environment have really been a, a concurrent theme um, in my career. I've always been interested in both and kind of where the uh, interplay is for both. Um, I think that business is one of the most uh, transformational for, uh, forces in our society. They obviously have a lot of impact, whether it's um, economic, whether it's environmental. Um, and I think that the environmental crisis is one of the biggest issues that is going to be facing my generation. Uh, so being involved, being knowledgeable, being active in this space is also an imperative uh, for me and a lot of my uh, classmates. So after I graduated from NYU, I did four years of management consulting, and I felt like I was not having the impact that I wanted. Um, I was doing a lot of really cool projects, big budgets, global scopes, um, but none of it was really tying back to the purpose that I was interested in having impact on. So I enrolled first in the Nicholas School of the Environment. Um, I wanted to get scientific background. I wanted to understand the policy drivers. I wanted to understand the stakeholder engagement models and really build that environmental credibility with the goal of going back into the corporate space afterwards. About halfway through my first year, my uh, uh, member classmates looked like they were having a lot of fun down at this Fuqua <laughs> School of Business and they convinced me to apply. Um, and I wasn't thinking about it at first because I thought I had a strong professional background already. But what I really realized is that both skill sets will get you a lot farther combined. I think one strength that Fuqua has that maybe isn't as apparent at the Nicholas School is that there's just a powerhouse um, professional network in the private sector. Um, I think the Nicholas School is very well connected in nonprofits, in governments, but if you're thinking of really having a serious career in the private sector in a high level position, um, the Fuqua network um, really helps you get connected to those positions, to those people, and it also gives you that credibility on the business side of can I lead and influence an organization, um, do I have that credibility from both the environment side and from the professional side. Um, so I think the uh, MEM MBA degree has been great for me. Um, I really enjoyed my year at the Nicholas School last year. Right now I'm at Fuqua, uh, a semester in, finals are next <laughs> week. Um, but I'm really enjoying it. I'm learning uh, two very different skill sets, engaging with two very different groups of classmates, and um, really uh, getting the best out of both communities. Awesome. So, talk a little bit about your internship. So, one of the ben the one of the benefits of doing the three year program is that you get two internships. Right, you have two summers, and you can use them in different ways. A lot of our members choose to do their first summer internship in sort of more environmental focused internship. And then they choose after their first year, the MBA to do a more of a business mm -hmm. focused internship. Is that the way it's played out for you as well? Yes. So um, as I detailed, I have a very corporate private sector heavy background. And I decided that I wanted to go to the next school to learn environment things. So against my uh, instincts of finding a nice company to intern for, I decided to work for a nonprofit this summer. I was at the Sierra Club in North Carolina. Uh, and it's a completely different playing field than the corporate world. I learned so many things that I don't think I would have learned if I was just doing another sustainability internship at a traditional company. Um, it was really interesting to see how environmentalists think, um, how we engage with policy, with communities, the positions are just very different than in business. Um, and I spent most of my summer doing research in all types of subject matter that I never would have looked at uh, if I was left to my own devices. I think in my first week, my boss came up to me and said, we need to be, uh, you need to have a position on hog farms, small modular nuclear reactors, offshore wind, and environmental <laughs> justice by next Tuesday. <laughs> Here's some links, get reading. Um, and I think it was a really challenging internship. Um, for an internship, I needed four or five graduate level courses to just understand all the research that I was doing. And I felt that that's where the Nicholas School really came through for me. I was reading about you know these nuclear reactors, these offshore wind auctions, and I was like, I took some energy classes, let's look at the kilowatts, let's look at the levelized cost of energy. And I think if I was just coming at it from a business perspective, I would be really panicked <laughs> by some of those terms. And um, 
I really thank my my year at the Nicholas School for helping me be comfortable with those topics and be able to speak to them with a position of, I know what this means, mm -hmm. I know what the implications are, and here's how I can digest it and break it down for um, an audience that maybe doesn't have that expertise. Awesome. And I know it's very early in the year, we haven't gotten really into recruiting for next year, but do you have thoughts on sort of how you might use your next summer? Um, so right now, I've been looking at consulting companies. Um, I think that there's a lot of big commitments that are being made on the part of companies right now in terms of net zero, in terms of building out new product and business lines. And I don't think they have the in-house expertise or maybe the capabilities or just hands to do the work. Uh, so I think that the global consultancies are going to be growing a lot in this field. Um, and I'd love to be part of one of those teams. Awesome. So we get asked a lot about careers, and I think Juan Pablo's experience is, is fantastic as it illustrates sort of that combination of both the business and environment. Um, we also have students, though, in our dual degree program that want to do all kinds of different things. So I'll try to think of a few, and you guys might help me fill in some of the gaps. We have quite a strong interest in the energy sector from our dual degree students. So there is uh, an energy concentration, at least right now. Um, it will be still under yeah. the new program as well. So students who want to go really, really deep on the energy topic can do that at the Nicholas School of the Environment. Um, and many of our members then choose to pursue a career in renewable energy development, energy finance, um, working for utilities or independent power producers. Um, many choose to go into sort of either consulting in the sustainability and climate space or corporate sustainability. Um, and then others have really particular interests like um, that want to do uh, financing for nature-based solutions to climate change or want to uh, be entrepreneurial and, and start their own thing, interested in sustainable agriculture and food systems, um, supply chains. What else am I forgetting? Some of your classmates. Yeah. Partnerships with governments. Uh, some people end up at nonprofits doing business partnerships, but from the NGO side, um, some think tanks as well. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it's a really, uh, a customizable program right. in that you have all these choices as Cindy outlined of your concentrations at the Nicholas School. You also have a number of concentrations. That I never can remember the exact number. I think it's 15 mm -hmm. or 16 concentrations at Fuqua. Do you, do you know what's your concentration? I don't think I have one yet. Yeah. <laughs> at Fuqua, you do not have to declare your concentration at the outset. You can declare it. It's almost more like a major, so you can wait all the way until the spring of your last year before you declare your concentration, if you choose to. Um, there are quite a few options, and many of our member students uh, do. We have a concentration in energy and environment and another in energy finance, which are great, but many of our member students kind of feel that they have checked that box with their MEM degree, so they might then choose a concentration at Fuqua in finance or, or marketing or strategy to signal kind of a complementary functional skill set. So that's one way to, to think about the concentrations in, the, in, in both schools and then to think about sort of the richness you can have as you combine different concentrations and skills at Fuqua and, and mix and match those with the opportunities at Nick School to really customize your degree in the three years. Yeah, I think that's one of the real benefits of being especially at Duke <clears throat> because of the flexibility and the ways that you can mix and match things to customize your educational experience to fit your professional aspirations. So <clears throat> with the, the various options at Fuqua, the various options at the Nicholas School, um, you have an advisor at the Nicholas School who's a faculty member who can help you plan that so that you're taking best advantage of uh, those opportunities that are presented to you. Uh, both academically and curricularly, um, and then uh, extracurricularly in all the different uh, groups and, and student organizations and things that add value to your experience. Great. So we have a question here that's about the mechanics, which is pretty straightforward to answer, and then we'll talk more about careers. Um, the question is, if you decide to just apply for the Fuqua MBA, is it possible to apply for the dual degree program while you're a first year MBA? Um, and that is absolutely possible. So there are three different possible paths. One is you apply to both programs, as Cindy alluded to, before you started either. So the advantage here is that if you apply now, let's say for next year, and you're admitted at both the Nick School and Fuqua, 
we will uh, matriculate you as a dual degree from day one. So you'll be over at the next school in your first year, um, but we'll get you plugged into the MEMBA community. Uh, we will uh, have welcome MEMBA events. We will get you plugged into clubs at Fuqua if you want to. So you're at next school, but you can choose to come over and take advantage of some of the activities over at Fuqua at the same time. Uh, so you'll really feel like from day one that you are part of both schools. Um, the other choice is you can start at one program or the other and apply. So Juan Pablo started at the Nick School and he decided in his first year to apply to Fuqua. And if you do that, then um, as soon as you're admitted at Fuqua, you know, come let me know, let the club know, we will get you up to speed and plugged in um, as a member student. Um, it also helps to be thinking about the dual degree as early as possible so that you can think about how you might plan your classes. So you might plan the, the classes that you take at next school to make sure that you're accomplishing as many requirements as possible in that first year to give yourself the most flexibility as possible in, in your third year. Um, the other path is possible too. So you can start as an MBA student and apply to the next school. And in that case, your schedule will look a little different from most of the members in your cohort. So you will be in year one at Fuqua, year two at next school, and your third year will be a joint degree or a jointly shared um, year. And we definitely have students do that. Um, it's certainly possible. Uh, it looks a little bit different, but you know, as I mentioned, the, the member club and the member cohorts are really uh, very supportive and would certainly help you get plugged in across your cohort year. So it's not essential that you follow that path, um, but it is sort of the, it is the more traditional path, I would say, for our, our dual typical. degree students. Yeah. More typical. <clears throat> um, our next question is um, about changing careers and, and pivoting into new careers. And I think this is a great chance for us to talk about some of the unique program offerings that both schools have. Um, we have a student who asked about, can you change careers completely? Can you come from a very non-traditional background and go, for instance, into the energy sector or go into an environmental field with no pre-grad school work experience in the space? And I will say, from my experience, absolutely. We have students that come in from all different kinds of backgrounds. Um, some do have a business background or an environmental background. Others you know, might have worked in policy, might have worked in the Peace Corps, might have worked in a business function that's very far removed from what they actually want to do after their grad school. So grad school is a, a you know, terrific way to pivot your career, whether that's changing industry or it's changing function or it's both. And you're going to do that not only through your classes and the curriculum that you choose to take and your concentrations, um, but also many of the extracurricular offerings, um, of which there are are many, right? So maybe we'll start, Juan Pablo, if you want to tell us a little bit about some of the extracurriculars you have been involved with, and then Cindy and I can fill in a few other thoughts. Yeah, um, I got involved in a little too much here and there. <laughs> Very easy to do. <laughs> um, I will say there's no lack of opportunities here, whether it's academic, professional, or just fun uh, things that are happening. So I think I can touch on a little bit of all of those. Um, so academic, one of my favorite parts of being at Duke uh, is this program at Fuqua called the Fuqua Client Consulting Practicum, or FCCP for short. Um, so this is a class that happens in the spring semester where you do a real live consulting case um, in a group of five MBA students. Um, and for some of the projects that are associated with the EDGE Center, um, they have an energy or an environmental sustainability focus. Um, and some of those take uh, some students from the Nicholas School if they have like a, a specific area of expertise that could be helpful in, in rounding out the team. Um, so before I even got into Fuqua, I was actually hanging out over here doing one of those projects with uh, Royal Caribbean Cruise Lines working on an ESG sustainability project. Um, and while I had experience in consulting, I didn't have experience in sustainability consulting. So this was a great chance to get a real project under my belt. We are working directly with the chief sustainability officer and her team. So this is something that had real impact. And uh, I'm back as a fellow managing some new projects for this year's batch. Uh, so I think that that's been a really great uh, experience for me. Uh, it looks great on the resume and I learned a lot. Um, 
speaking from the semi-curricular uh, side, I've also been doing a lot of research on the side. So in my first year, I did an assistantship at the Nicholas School uh, with the Nicholas Institute, looking at the uh, carbon impact of the ocean economy. I believe this is being worked on um, as like a working paper for the UN Oceans Conference. Um, so again, from the academic side, I, I got to do some research with academics um, and again, flex a muscle that I hadn't really used before because I came from the private sector. Um, so again, just using your skills in a different way uh, that can get you a lot of exposure, a lot of learning, uh, get you in the room with some experts from around the world. We had a team in Sweden that we were collaborating with. Um, so again, global impact from day one. Uh, right now, I'm uh, collaborating with Katie at the Edge Center. I'm going to be writing a, a paper on um, climate policy and what M every MBA needs to know. Uh, <laughs> so again, that's technically I'm getting credit for it, but it's going to be a lot of independent research, um, looking at policy, looking at business, looking at how those interplay with each other in the US, in Europe. Um, again, very different from what I was working on prior to coming to Duke. Um, and it's great to develop these, uh, these new uh, skills. Outside of classes, I am also involved in a lot of business and the environment things. Um, I'm a Bold Fellow as well. Bold is our Building Outdoor Leaders at, group, uh, at Duke group. Um, so it is uh, across all of the graduate schools, but there's a lot of Fuqua people. It's a lot about outdoor leadership. So we have multi-day expeditions. Um, we're actually going to Western North Carolina to do a weekend backpacking trip to Grandfather Mountain this weekend. Um, and I am going to be uh, leading one of the groups. Nice. So we're going to be freezing our tails off. It's going to be uh, 34 degrees at its coldest. <laughs> but we're going to have a lot of fun. We're going to teach some people how to hike, how to Excellent. backpack, how to cook instant meals over a propane stove. Nice. Um, so there's definitely a lot of ways that you can engage with the, the business and environment interplay. Um, then our key trip is in December where we're all gonna go to Patagonia and do like a nice. six day hiking trip. Uh, we're gonna ring in the new year in a glacier. So uh, yeah, lots of exciting things happening at Duke. Excellent. Is there anything you wanna add, Cindy, from the next wow. school? Wow. <laughs> yeah. um, I mean, I, I, not specifically. I think that uh, the first thing Juan Pablo said about getting a little too involved is um, a challenge because there are so many opportunities to be involved, uh, depending on what your interests are, from energy and sustainability to environmental justice to diversity, equity, and inclusion, um, you know, climate change. All of those are terrific opportunities to, uh, in a very safe way, begin to flex muscles that you're either just developing or um, are trying to uh, strengthen from previous experience. So. Uh, you know, a lot of the students that I talk to, it's not so much what am I going to do with my time, it's how do I decide what I'm going to do with my time. There are too many things I want to do. Yeah. So um, it just depends on what your interests are. One of the nice things I think about, particularly at the Nicholas School, um, there's a lot of individual and personal attention. And so you, you can sit down with anybody in student services, with me, with our, our associate dean, with a faculty member, and sort of talk through uh, your interests and we can then suggest ways that you become involved. We have a career center that's dedicated to our professional master's degree students and there are coaches there that can talk you through things. So it's, it's, there are lots of opportunities to get support and lots of opportunities for you to talk through what your interests are and suggestions and recommendations on how to make those combined successfully for you with a view to the fact that what you're really trying to do is further your career. Yeah. And you'll have an academic advisor, is that the right term at next yes. school too? So, a faculty member. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, the, you know, this idea of support from the Duke community is really pervasive at both schools and I think that's one of the things that makes Duke such a special place. If you have been to Fuqua at all as a pr prospective student, you will have heard the mantra about Team Fuqua. And uh, we really live and breathe it here every day. It's a very supportive community. Um, as I mentioned, the dual degree students, we don't have a separate 
home with a prescribed track for you. Instead, we at EDGE try to sort of be that support network to help you navigate the dual degree and tailor it to your own interests, to your point. So you'll have, you'll have the opportunity at the next school to talk with faculty advisor and the career center and the student advising team and get all kinds of input and classmates, to classmates how, to, how to make your experience terrific. And the same thing at Fuqua, you know, you'll come, you'll meet with me, you'll meet with our center's executive director, Dan Vermeer, who teaches a lot of our classes. You'll talk about your interests, you'll meet with our career center, um, and you'll have this incredible ability to, to really choose the experiences that are most useful to you as it furthers your, your career goals. Um, in addition to the concentrations at Fuqua, I think we have 60 plus clubs, so <laughs> there are lots to be involved with. There's the Energy Club, there's a dedicated club for the member community, the, the member club. There is a Net Impact Club, which is the club for students interested in social impact and, and sustainability. There's the Food and Ag Club. And then there are lots and lots of functional clubs like the, the Consulting Club and the uh, Entrepreneurship and Venture Capital Club, the Finance Club, as well as plenty of fun uh, affiliated clubs too, um, like the, the Beer Club, there's like a, a Wine <laughs> Club. Are, they, are you involved with any of these other? I've had there's a, diversity some clubs. encounters, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's sports clubs. There's a lot of sports clubs, um, a lot of just social. We have a tailgate club, and we just show up to every sporting event and <laughs> just start blasting music, and we bring snacks and, yeah. and beer for everyone. Yeah. So there's a lot of fun. There's also, to the original question about sort of pivoting careers, you know, if you say you, you wanted to work in the energy sector post-graduation and you haven't um, worked in that sector before, the Energy Club has a whole sort of roadmap for students that want to enter into careers in this space. We have a dedicated person in our Career Management Center focus on energy sector careers. Um, we have workshops including, like, uh, it's called Power Up. It's basically Energy 101 at the very start of the school year. If you don't have background, you can you can go to all of these events. We have speakers on campus. We have the EDGE seminar class. Um, we have uh, power lunches, they're called. We're, we're bringing speakers in to talk with students. Um, and you have support, um, not just here at Fuqua and the next school, but also to access to resources from across Duke's entire campus, um, including the Nicholas Institute for Energy, Environment, and Sustainability. Right. New, it's yep. a new name, new which name. I'm working on. Um, and they have terrific events, too. Um, on the energy front, we also work in the fall. We always host an annual energy week at Duke, including a big uh, student run conference uh, called the Duke University Energy Conference, as well as a, a case competition, networking events. In the spring, we host the Sustainable Business and Social Impact Conference. Um, there's a food, uh, food and ag conference, which covers a lot of sustainability topics too. So, all of these are activities that you can get involved with as a participant. And they're also, they are also activities that you could get involved with as a leader because these are student run conferences. Right. Um, so the students are the ones sort of planning the agenda, inviting the speakers, reaching out to the sponsors um, and making the events happen. And absolutely you could show up on campus with no expertise at a particular uh, function or industry and go in the space of your three-year joint degree program to being one of the most competitive candidates for jobs in those in that field um, by the time you graduate. And I'd add also, um, when I think back over 20 years, we've had students who have been English majors or journalism majors or even music majors. So a major or previous experience isn't necessarily a limiting factor. On the science and Nicholas School side, we do want you to have had some calculus, some statistics, potentially some microeconomics, uh, preferably before you get here. And there's information at our website about that. Um, so, you know, you can come in and you don't have to be an environmental science major or a biology major or something like that, um, but you should be prepared to have some quantitative um, background coming in. And that just makes you stronger going into courses, makes you stronger when you're talking to faculty about research jobs that they might have makes you stronger when you're talking to people about employment for the summer internship. Um, so I would encourage you, if you really are thinking seriously about the MEM or the MF, to check out what those uh, admissions requirements are. Great, thank you. 
So we, we have another question here for you, Juan Pablo. Great. It's about the master's project. Sure. So the question is, do you have trouble continuing your project uh, during your second year, or do you not start the final project till year three? Do you want to talk about your specific experience? Yeah. Um, so I haven't encountered the master's project yet. That is something that happens during your third year. Um, and I believe that for MEM MBAs there are uh, different requirements. So I think you can pursue a traditional master's project, which is a, a very intensive um, year-long uh, study. Uh, and there's a whole process at the Nicholas School to get you matched up with that. Uh, but Cindy, rem uh, correct me if I'm wrong, there's also um, different options for MEM MBA students on that. There right? are, yes. So you could uh, potentially ex do an extension of something that you've worked on here at Fuqua. Um, you, how the credits and, and how that all works out depends on what you're doing, uh, but that's a possibility to extend uh, a project that you've been working on at Fuqua. If, if you get credit at Fuqua, you're not going to get credit at Nicholas School, um, but it can still help. Um, you can um, extend a project that you've worked on at Fuqua that you haven't gotten credit for or been compensated for, and then you can get academic credit towards your MEM or MF uh, on the Nicholas School side, or as Juan Pablo looks like he's going to be doing, and that's starting a whole brand new master's project, uh, of what they call a 2S master's project, two semesters. Often, uh, many, if not most, of our uh, MEM and MF students do group master's projects for real life clients. Um, and so they'll work in groups of two, three, four, sometimes five students uh, for a, a client that has been generated by one or more of our faculty. Um, and so they work in concert to resolve a real problem that that particular client has. And that can be another really exciting way to develop your muscles in consulting, in problem solving, in uh, team management. <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, it, it's, a, it's a great way to, to begin, in a very safe way, to develop those skills and uh, learn from the experience. Great. So another question we have here is one that we get quite often, and that is, what's the difference between doing the dual degree versus doing an MBA with a concentration in energy and environment? Uh, the flip side of this question, which we also get asked a lot, is what's the difference between doing the dual degree and the MEM with a business and environment concentration? Right. So maybe I'll just share my take on it, and then you all can add anything that I miss. Um, but this dual degree program is really two full master's degrees. Right. So if you take the MBA uh, with an energy and environment concentration, which is an option here at Fuqua. You, you'll do a two-year program, you will have an MBA, and you'll take a, a handful of classes to fulfill the concentration in energy and environment. And it's true, you can participate in all of the extracurriculars that we've talked about so far. Um, you can take a couple of classes outside of Fuqua as part of your MBA, so you might go over and take the energy and environment class at the Nicholas School, um, or you might take the energy law class at the School of Law next door. But you're going to be taking that as a smaller subset of your overall MBA um, experience. Whereas if you do the dual degree, you, you're really also getting a full master's focused on that topic, whether it's energy and environment or business and environment or a combination of different uh, programs over at the Nick School uh, that will give you a depth that you just can't have with just doing a concentration in the MBA. Um, and I suspect that's true, would you say, for the Nicholas School side of things as well? Absolutely. I, you know, one of the nice things about being at Duke is that you can take courses in other schools at Duke. You're not limited just to the school where you're exploring your degree. So you could be uh, an MEM student with a concentration in business and environment. And so you could take potentially some of the elective courses offered by Fuqua. You can take courses at the Sanford School of Public Policy, at the law school. Um, so you do have a fair number of options. Again, what, what I encourage students to do is to sit down and think about what your career goals are and then what are those things that you need to acquire to move you in that direction. So you could do an MEM with a business and environment concentration, take some courses in other places. You could pick a different concentration. If you're an MEM MBA, you may want to pick one of the more science-y oriented concentrations under the MEM because you're going to get a lot of business from Fuqua. So 
you really are getting two full degrees. You are meeting the graduation requirements of the degree for each degree. What you're sacrificing, if you want to call it that, are some of the electives that you might have. So, but you're filling in with this other whole degree. So, um, to me, it's it's a it's a plus plus win win uh, situation. Yeah. Anything you want to add? You considered taking one degree and then you added the MBA. Yeah. What really, besides the fun your classmates were having, <laughs> was there fun. anything else that kind of sold you on the idea that the dual degree was uh, the way to go? Yeah, so I started this to get credibility in the environment space, and it's a really complicated topic, I think, where you have communities and um, energy and politics, it's a lot uh, a lot to, to delve through. So I think that if you're taking a couple electives, sure you can learn a lot of the high strokes parts of climate and, and sustainability, but if you want to be a real leader in this space, you need to, you need to put in the work, you need to learn how everything works. Um, and I think that if you're going to be a, a business decision maker, you having like a very strong sci scientific and policy and community background in environment is just going to be such an asset that will pay a lot of dividends throughout your career. Mm -hmm. um, I think uh, one of the big problems that we have is like greenwashing. And I think you have companies and groups making a lot of big, bold statements about the environment. And I think you need two master's degrees to really sort <laughs> through them and be like, is this credible or is yeah. this um, imaginative uh, uh, messaging from, from the other side? Um, also, from when you're making decisions, do you want to be credible you want to yeah. know and have confidence in, in what you're doing and I right. think it's a little challenging to do that if you don't have the scientific background just because that's the nature of the space yeah. on the flip side I think the MBA gives you tremendous business credibility um, I came from consulting and I can tell you that if you have an MBA um, people just trust you more they value your opinion it's just these three magical letters after your name that say this is a person that I can trust with a big project. Um, and I think that both of those together yeah. are a really strong combination. Well, and I, I, I totally agree with you. And I think from the environmental side, you know, if you have somebody with just an MBA coming in, there's suspicion, mm -hmm. you know, well, you're really representing corporate. That's the black hat, you know, we want somebody who's a white hat person, sorry for those terms, but you know, uh, so you, you have this level of credibility, as Juan Pablo said, with both degrees. You have the credibility with the business community, with the MBA. You have credibility with the environmental and sustainable and energy community with the MEM. And, you know, we have one of the premier programs in the country for those subject areas. So you have this real benefit of uh, when you do both degrees of creating a foundation of credibility in in both areas. You kind of have a foot in both camps. And that gives you the opportunity to be that translation person, that liaison between the two worlds. And we need more cooperation and more collaboration. And so people coming out of Duke with both of those degrees are instant in that uh, space. Yeah. I, I mean, I think I'll add that the credibility, it doesn't come just from the letters, no. mm -hmm. right? Because you do, as a dual degree, you're gonna take many more classes in mm -hmm. finance, accounting, yeah. operations than you would if you were just doing the MEM, right? right? And so your credibility is gonna come from having put so much of that into practice. And also building the networks, speaking with the alumni from the private yeah. sector, speaking with, your, building your network with your classmates in the MBA program, as well as the next school. So all of that sort of builds to the, the credibility right beyond just the, the degree itself. Mm -hmm. I think also the one of the most interesting things for our dual degree students is that you really, you get to immerse yourself in the world at the next school and then the world at the Fuqua and they're very different, right? They're different in terms of the students, they're different in terms of the culture and it's very, very applicable if you're gonna go out and work in one of these jobs at the intersection of business and environment to, to be able to understand the, like the culture of the nonprofit or environmental consulting, where they're coming from, the culture of the investment bankers or the management consultants, where they're coming from, and to be able to be conversant in those two different kind of worlds. Mm -hmm. 
Um, we have another question here that is <clears throat> about uh, can you, how does the MBA portion of this program compare to an executive MBA program taken independently? And it's a little bit hard to say. I'm sure it certainly depends on which type of executive MBA program. Uh, do, you, uh, do you ever have MEMs who are taking an executive MBA? We don't okay. have, with the Fuqua MB executive programs, we do not have a program that maps to right. a joint degree with the Nicholas School. Um, could it be done? Probably you could Possibly. take an MEM, and then you could take the executive MBA from Fuqua. Uh, the executive MBA is less than two years. But I think it would be hard to take them both at the same time, and I don't know that there's any way to do them jointly. Uh, the Nicholas School has the Duke Environmental Leadership and Master of Environmental Management, which is aimed at um, environmental professionals who have at least five years of experience. It's mostly distance learning with some place-based sessions, but um, it's designed for working professionals, and it's already been uh, adjusted somewhat in terms of requirements to earn the degree. I don't see that you could do that concurrently with an executive MBA. I just think that you wouldn't, um, I don't think you'd get enough benefit out of either degree to make it worthwhile. That's my personal opinion. Could you? Potentially. I think if that's something that you're really interested in, you should be exploring that with the admissions offices for both schools. And it's true. I mean, our executive MBA programs at Fuqua, they are designed to deliver on most of the primary skill sets that our daytime MBA programs deliver. The same types of classes, you know, finance, accounting, strategy, marketing, leadership, classes, operations. Um, typically, the executive programs have, uh, you know, a lot fewer electives, and you obviously have a lot less time on campus. So, are you getting? some of the same coursework, absolutely. Um, is it appropriate for some of you who might be watching? Potentially, it depends a bit on sort of where you are in your career, right. how you fit the admissions profile, what you'd like to get out of the program, uh, whether you want to be fully immersed on campus full time or whether you want to do it as more of a part time uh, opportunity while you're still working. So there are a lot of factors that go into choosing which MBA program is right for you. Um, I think that we are coming up on time here, and we've answered a lot of the questions that have come in. So maybe before we wrap up, I will just ask um, both Juan Pablo and Cindy about final thoughts, uh, what makes Duke a, a terrific place, um, and why our, our prospective students might consider coming here for a dual degree. Who wants to start? I can go. Everyone's looking at me. <laughs> <laughs> You're it. Um, so I remember when I was applying for graduate schools, um, Duke gave me a really good vibe because one of the uh, parts of the application was please list 15 fun random facts about yourself that we might not know from the rest of your application. And I remember I was killing myself with applications. A lot of the questions were like, in 300 words, describe how you're going to fix the world. And, <laughs> you know, I think um, there's a lot more to us as people than just what we do, you know, during our, our daytime productive hours. And I think that Duke really wants those rounded out candidates that have an interesting background. Um, I think that they look at people more holistically than here's the test scores and, that's, uh, and the one essay. Um, so I, I think that just, the fact that Duke really cares about you uh, as a rounded out individual is great, um, especially when so much of the learning comes from your classmates. Both at Nicholas School and at Fuqua, I can say that it's a cohort of the most diverse people I have ever seen in one place. Um, and it is just such a great learning experience to have those people next to you when you're going through homework. Um, I think that piggybacking off your earlier statement, um, if you don't have a background in something, someone in your class will, and you can ask them because they are the experts on it, and they're trying to learn something from you, perhaps. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm a big proponent of diversity of background and diversity of thought, and that's why I'm getting two master's degrees in two very different schools. Yeah. Um, and obviously, I would recommend it because I'm having a great time. Excellent. I mean, I think from a sort of larger Duke perspective, Duke is a, a really great institution. It's not that big. People think it's huge because of all the medical science and research that's going on. The university side itself is relatively small. 
which I think really gives the benefit of a little bit more intimacy. And people get, have an opportunity to get to know you as a person and know your name and, and know a little bit about you. And, and I think it helps that you can, it helps you feel supported. Uh, it helps you feel part of a community. I, the, the Duke alumni are very strange in that, and it's a wonderful thing, it's not a bad thing. Even at the graduate and professional level, alumni are incredibly dedicated to Duke. And you, you mentioned the Fuqua alumni, and on the Nicholas School side, our, our alumni are amazing. And they're always available, and they're more than willing to give advice, meet for a cup of coffee, talk about their career trajectories. I mean, it's, it's, it's an incredible community of Duke University. And then within those are the MEM community, the MBA community, the MEMBA community. There are all these ways to connect that you might not get if you were at a really huge institution where there was way large degrees of separation between the different schools and programs and where you have a concurrent degree is the only time that they interact. So I think that's a huge plus. I think where we are is a huge plus. Uh, you know, we have some winter, but we don't have a lot of winter. We have summer, it's hot and humid, but we have air conditioning. <laughs> we have gorgeous springs and lovely falls. We're about three hours from the ocean. We're about three hours from the mountains. We're not too far from Washington, D.C. We're about six hours from Atlanta. So it's a very centrally located place, and it has um, most, if not all, of the benefits of a larger city without some of the hassles and stressors. You know, we don't have 15 Ethiopian restaurants, but we do have Ethiopian restaurants. <laughs> you know, so, and we have Durham Performing Arts Center, so there's a lot of stuff going on. It's a very cultural, cultured area with Durham and Duke and Chapel Hill and UNC North Carolina and University of North Carolina and Chapel Hill. Raleigh is the state capital, that's the Triangle area. Raleigh has North Carolina State University. So there's a lot of stuff going on with the tri Research Triangle Park in between, all the research and development that's going on there. So it's a very rich, robust uh, place to study. And we have people who come, and I'm from New York, and I'm going back to New York, and after two or three years here, they go, I want to stay in North Carolina, I love it. <laughs> so um, I think that's a real plus. Look at where you would be going to school. Um, a, a, you know, the, the physical location of it as much as, or at least in tandem with the academics. That, those are great points. I, as someone who came to Duke as an undergrad and has almost uh, never left since then um, and made uh, Durham my home, I, I really love living here. I think yeah. that's a real benefit for us here too. Um, I will add uh, my, my final thoughts too on, on what makes Duke a really great place for the dual degree. Um, first of all, Duke is world class across every one of its graduate programs, which is really saying something, right? Be that we can be such a world class, you know, business school, school of the environment, school of public policy, which is right across the street, the school of law, which is next door, the engineering school. So you, as a student, as a dual degree, you have opportunities to take classes across all of those programs and know that you're getting just top tier academic expertise, um, no matter where you look on campus. And you're not sacrificing any of that sort of prestige um, because you have an incredible resource of, of world-class institutions here. Um, and the, the second point I will make is that our dual degree program, as you've heard us say today, is very customizable. So almost no matter what your interest is coming in, what you did before, where you wanna go afterwards, that intersection of business, energy, and environmental topics, we can help you figure out a strategy to customize your program with the combination of classes at the Nick School, the electives you take at Fuqua, the extracurriculars you choose to participate in, um, the, you know, the, the concentrations you take, also where you choose to in, in do your networking. We can help you find a path that is perfectly suited to you and customized to you rather than offering you, you know, here four options as a dual, dual degree student and you should follow one path or the other. Um, so that does make, give you a little bit of the onus is on you to mm -hmm. help us, you know, seek us out, help us help you tailor the program to your specific right. unique interests. Um, but you, you really have a lot of options um, that 
will help you come out of the dual degree feeling like you you know exactly what you want to do and you have all the tools to get there. So I think that is a, a really big asset. And then, of course, I was going to talk about the Duke community, too. <laughs> I mean, it is uh, just such a wonderful, a warm and welcoming community of students, faculty and alumni, as you can gather. Um, we we really we all feel really lucky uh, to be here and to be able to take part to connect with the the alumni across the programs to to connect with uh, the students who are here. I learned from students too, right? It's a, it's a really great to have all these dialogues. Students learn from each other as well as faculty and staff, um, and to have all those connections to industry and alumni who are willing to say yes when you. Um, ask them for a phone call to help you learn, help with your networking and your career, um, and help you feel supported along the way. So, And staff tend to stay at Duke, so you have, uh, you know, you have people who have been around for a long time who know a lot of alumni uh, in the program where they work, and so um, that's also a helpful uh, connection that can be made. Um, you know, I started at Duke because I didn't know what else I wanted to do mm -hmm. working at Duke. I'm not a Duke graduate. Um, and found that I loved it. And so over the years have developed my own networks that I can call on and, you know, I can call Katie and say, Katie, I need this, or, yeah. you know, somebody in the Pratt School of Engineering or the Sanford School of Public Policy. So those are real benefits, I think, to having this kind of close-knit community because you have all these options and resources to help you make those connections. We're not going to tell you what those connections should be. That's really up to you and part of the sort of, uh, you know, ability to, to customize your, your experience here. But if you say, you know, I, I was in musical theater before I came, I still want to be involved in musical theater, how can I do that? You know, then we can help you find those resources. Um, and we're not going to say, well, I don't know. You know, we're going to try to try to help you find those those connections and make those connections because those are what make you a well-rounded and whole person. Yeah, excellent. Great. Well, thank you all so much for joining us today. Um, this is always a great topic that we love to talk about. Uh, really proud of the dual degree options here at Duke and happy to answer any questions that you have. If we didn't get to your specific question today or you have you think of something afterwards and you have a follow-up question, please reach out to us. Um, certainly, you could also reach out to the admissions office at either school with your question, and they will help connect you to the right person, whether that's a staff member or whether it's a current student um, or whether it's a question they answer themselves. So again, uh, thanks for joining us, and we hope we'll see you at Duke soon. <laughs>